You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast, episode 175. Today I am talking about, it sounds like a bit of a negative title, but that's not the point. You'll have to bear with me. No one is coming. Um, it comes from the last conversation I had in episode 174 with Coot Blackson. I will go into more detail about that momentarily. Before I do so, head on over to anxietypodcast.com where there is a world of information for you just waiting. Um, you can check out things like The Anxiety Journal, my day-to-day journal, which helps people overcome anxiety, create some accountability in their lives so that they can start to write down gratitudes, how they would... Uh, or what you would take on if you weren't afraid today. Those sorts of things. Love it. Getting great feedback on it. Also, um, in the last couple of days, we've had a, a, an increase in interest for the retreat, which is happening in about a month's time. So for those of you who have been waiting, now is the time. We're filling up and uh, expect that to be done in the next week or two um, because it's happening in a month. So it will need to be. Um, if you're interested in one-on-one coaching, you can click on the coaching tab fill out that form. I only work with a select number of coaching clients at one time because I got to bring the energy um, and bring the passion to it. And so I work with about 10 people at any one time. Um, So if there's availability and that's something you want to do, fill out that form. Let's get on the phone and see if it's a fit for you. Okay. And also on the front page of the website, the Less Anxiety, More Life community, come and join our Facebook group. There's hundreds of people in it. There's people like you who are going through some tough times and we support each other to get through that. There's just so much good, positive advice from people in there that I absolutely love it. I love the people in there. Um, I love being part of that group. So join us. Okay. No one is coming. Uh, again, I'm not trying to be a, a Debbie Downer. This is good information. Um, this was a big part of the, the conversation I had with Coot on, on Tuesday or that came out on Tuesday. Um, where we were talking about you are the one, a big part of that that really stuck with me and resonated is the fact that no one is coming. It's kind of like the reminder we need. Um, it's the, it's the person who plays the guitar in their basement and aspires to be a, a mega star, but never actually goes outside of the house to play on the street or to send their tape off a tape. What's a tape? Nobody has tapes anymore. Send off your MP3 or whatever you use these days to, uh, to a, to a company or to get it listed. There isn't even recording companies anymore. You just put it on iTunes, I suppose. But anyway, it's the people who are aspiring to do things. One of my favorite bands, um, singers is a band called Passenger. And that guy, when he didn't have any other options, he just started busking and he got discovered through busking on the street and just getting his music out there, get it out into the world. So out of that whole discussion, that was the thing that really stuck with me. Um, and I, as I said, it could be a, interpreted as a bit lonely and isolating, but that's really not the intention. The intention is that only you can move you, right? Um, And also, by the way, a little tick in your box, a little high five to you, my friend. The fact that you're listening to this means that you are searching for more. You're looking for more in your life. You're aspiring to be more because if you weren't, then you wouldn't have found this podcast. You wouldn't be trying to get some help. You wouldn't be trying to change. So you've shown up. And uh, for that, I salute you. Well done. We're on the way, right? Um, and I work, I work with many people one on one and they are individuals who have chosen, they've chosen that they want more in their lives. They've effectively said, I'm choosing to change. That's what working with, with me is all about. You've heard me say, stop coping, start changing. So people have said, I want to change. I need some help. How do I get it? I've read the leaflets that didn't work. I've looked on the internet, too many options. So they've chosen change. Um, and I'm not saying working with me is the only way, it's just one of the ways. But even those, even kind of with those that step forward, um, they still have to take that knowledge and implement it, right? They have to take from our discussions and put it into practice and lean into the fear and do the things that are a bit uncomfortable. Only then does change actually happen. I was talking to somebody the other day and they were saying how, you know, they want to do some more work, but they're kind of not quite ready yet. And I was like, okay, well, when you're ready, 
you know where I am. I'm happy to help you and support you, but I can't make you ready. You need to come to it on your own effectively. Um, so perhaps in, in some ways, you know, as kids, someone is looking for, someone is coming. It's our parents. They're looking after us and they often fill that role of taking care of us and protecting us, um, from the dangers of the world. I do this for my own children. I used to do it even more, but now I'm kind of cognizant that they need to be exposed to a bit of risk. They need to figure stuff out for themselves a little bit, right? Um, to inoculate them against always thinking that somebody will save them. Because at some point we become adults, we become independent, and then we're like, oh, I've actually got to do this on my own. This is a bit weird. This is difficult. This is uncomfortable. I'm not used to discomfort. I'm going to stay here. Um, I always remember a, a story about a fellow Englishman, Richard Branson, um, and he was, uh, as the story goes, fighting in the car with his sister one day, and his mum pulled over and said, Richard, you naughty boy, get out of the car. And he got kicked out of the car onto the side of the road, driving down some country lane somewhere. Um, and she just kicked him out on the side of the road. He was five years old, standing on the side of the road. Now what do I do? Um, and he walked along, and uh, I don't, I'm not sure of the exact intricacies of the story, but he walked along, found somebody's house, picked up a phone, phoned his mum's house and said, uh, how do I get home? And he worked it out. Now, you could say, a lot of people would say these days, that's negligent, or she, you know, you could, she was actually preparing him for real life when you're going to have to work it out on your own. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I attempted this myself recently and it kind of backfired on me. So, uh, my kids were fighting in the car. My nine and 11 year old were fighting in the car a few weeks ago. And I was like, right, that's it. I can't do this anymore. I pulled over the car into this sort of disused car park near where I live. And I was like, get out. And they're like, what, what do you mean? Get out, dad. I was like, get out of the car now. Uh, where do you want us to go? Dad? I don't care. Just not here. Get out. And they got out of the car and sort of sheepishly walked off. I've got kind of visions of Richard Branson going through my head. He was five, they're nine and 11. They'll be fine. Um, we're only like a mile from our house probably. So they could have probably clubbed together and figured out how to get there, um, you know, between them. But I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it to him. So I kind of pretended to drive off. And then I was like, all right, get back in the car. Just don't touch each other. Separate yourselves. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of the, what I was trying to impart, but trying to give them more responsibility to do stuff on their own, I think is, is part of the key. Cause we tend to give our kids, well, if you're like me or as, as we're called helicopter parents, I'm not sure if I am a helicopter parent, but you know what I mean? Like people who are trying to do too much for them. Um, and I think on the medical side, the same kind of thing happens that we trust doctors so much because they've got white coats and they went to university and they must be more intelligent than me. Um, I think part of me and my own story is that my grandfather was a doctor and he was very, you know, well respected in our family. He was a good man and, and well loved. And so I think as a result of that and the amount of respect I had for him, I sort of blanket respected all doctors. Um, and the challenge that I've discovered is that not all doctors are as conscientious as grandpa was, um, or as good as, as he was in terms of caring about people. So, um, you know, and I, my, uh, doctor, I went to see after I had my panic attack and swang around and handed me a box full of pills and said, take these tablets. You'll be fine. I'm just going out for a smoke. And this doctor went out for a cigarette. Um, so it's kind of weird from that point of view, but, um, you know, anyway, that's kind of where, where I think we put our trust into, um, into people. And even on our, a recent podcast I did with Drew Ramsey, you remember he said for, for psychiatrists who went to university, and he went to a very uh, well-esteemed, I think he went to Columbia um, University, and he said, we don't even do anything on nutrition. And I think other people who've been on the show, other doctors have been on the show and said, yeah, we don't, don't do anything on nutrition. It's about medication and helping people cope through bad times, but not actually about changing. Again, back to change. Um, so again, no one is coming and even your doctor isn't going to save you as far as anxiety is concerned. They're not going to save you. They're not going to change you. There is no magic pill, right? It's up to you. You're the one who has to take control. Um, and then it was, and then as mentioned in the, in the Q episode, the government isn't coming to save you. In fact, in many cases, they're making the problem worse. 
you know, we, as I always talk about, we know in America and New Zealand, the only two countries in the world where you're allowed to advertise prescription drugs on TV. So people like, oh, maybe I do struggle to wake up in the morning. Maybe I do have these weird thoughts in my head that I need to take care of. And that's, you know, not helping the problem that they allow these large pharmaceutical companies to have so much free reign to put the stuff in our head that we need this stuff. Um, and, you know, the other thing is I talked a bit about this um, when I was talking about the, the election when Donald Trump won. People get very bent out of shape about that. People, people are losing their minds about Donald Trump's the new president of the United States. But the fact is, the truth of the matter is, is that you can impact your own life a lot more doing very simple things. Talking about nutrition, exercise, getting involved in community, um, you know, the commitment to take a walk, the commitment to switch off phones and actually be present with loved ones. They're going to impact your life multiple, multiple times more than who the president is today, who, interestingly, you know, I don't watch the news, as you know, but hasn't really seen that many ripples so far. Um, don't quote me on that. So, reconnecting with no one is coming. To me, this doesn't feel like I should give up all hope. To me, that is empowering to say, I am the creator of my destiny. I'm the creator of my life. I can have whatever experience I want on the basis that I'm the only one who's going to change it. Yes, there's people to help you. I'm here to help you. This resource is here to help you. But first of all, you had to have the, the courage to go out and look for something and admit to yourself that you need to do some work. Part two is that you deserve something better. You deserve something bigger. There's more out there for you, but you have to be prepared to go and take it. It's not going to get handed to you. The work won't get done for you. Me overcoming my anxiety or getting to grips with my anxiety a lot went through some painful times, went through some uncomfortable shit and eventually got to a place where I was like, oh, I feel better. But then when I look back and reflect, I'm like, yeah, because I had to do this, this and this repeatedly over time to feel better, right? So um, we're not shipwrecked on a desert island. We're, we're surrounded by opportunities to ask for help to change or attempt something different. So what will you choose to do? That's the question. And actually, the desert island isn't a bad analogy because we could sit there on the desert island, we could get sunburnt, and get dehydrated and die, or we could make a shelter, we could explore the island, we could learn how to fish and live and work on a life that way and, and not make the best of what we've got. But the world is full of opportunities today. You know, I go back to my, I love that line, you know, if information was the answer, we'd all be billionaires with perfect tabs. Well, you know, the, the beauty of it is, is that with a computer or with a cell phone, with the information, we can change. We have the ability to travel, to do things, to meet new people, to have new experiences, right? So the last point I'd like to make about this for now is that, you know, the amount of freedom that we have, um, we don't have to seek permission. We don't have to ask permission to start doing things in the world, in our lives, to implement this stuff. We are in control of our own destiny. And, you know, like I said, so many things are possible that we can create. And one thing is for sure, I speak to you beautiful people on the phone all the time, people who are signing up to chat about the retreat or one-on-one -on -one coaching or people that I just jump on the phone with because I want to help and we have a quick chat. One thing I know is for sure that is consistently true in, in, in almost all of you is that you know deep down in your soul that you are capable of more. Not just capable of more, but you know deep down that you are destined for more. On the other side of this kind of haze of anxiety is this landscape, which is the future of your life. You need to go through the haze to get to it. But almost everybody, without exception that I speak to, just says, like, I feel like I'm destined for more. I feel like I can do more with my life. I feel like I can impact other people, my family around me, the community. I've got a new business I want to start. I've got ideas I want to do. If only if it wasn't for this anxiety that's in the way, right? The truth is, as I always say, is that moving towards that destiny type thing, moving towards that dream, starting to take the baby steps towards it is actually the secret to taking away some of the anxiety around it as well. Okay. That's why 
I always go back to that, you know, more alignment less anxiety, more life, uh, but more alignment and, 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 and the side stuff starts to fall away. It's just not as relevant anymore. Okay. So that's what I want to talk about this week. No one is coming. Um, but there will be more podcast episodes. So keep listening to these for bits of inspiration, but think about something in your life that you can pick up today and say, right, this is one thing that I know I can do, or I know is going to make a difference. I know nobody's going to do it for me, but I've got to do it. That is, you know, step one. Just do the first one. And then once you've done that, do the next one piece by piece. You've got this. I'm with you. I believe in you. Okay. So that's it for this week. If you have enjoyed the anxiety podcast, well, first of all, thank you for listening. I appreciate it. You can go to iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play, wherever you consume this and leave a review. I will be eternally grateful. And, uh, yeah, very much appreciated if you happen to do that. If you have any questions for me, then again, go to the contact page on the website, send me an email. Um, I respond to all of them, fill in the form, send me a message and keep in touch and, and kind of let me know how things are going for you. And remember until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the anxiety podcast. For more information, Go to the anxietypodcast.com.